يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praises and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that exists, the Lord of the universe, who gives the best reward to the God-fearing. We praise him and seek his help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from our wicked deeds. Whomsoever has been guided by Allah, none can misguide. And whomsoever has been misguided by Allah, none can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone. I further bear witness that Muhammad wasallam is his true prophet and messenger. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, in our this series of uh, fasting, we will focus on another important element of the rulings of fasting, which is described by the uh, Fuqaha jurisprudent as Ahlul Adhar. It means those permitted to break the fast. But who must pay a fidya or ransom for not fasting? Number one, the elderly person. When elderly men or women reach an age that weakens them from fasting they do not have to fast but are required to feed a needy person for every day in ramadan for which he or she has missed fasting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa and as for those who can fast with difficulty, they have a choice either to fast or to feed a poor person for every day. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 184. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, recited the verse, and for those who can fast but do not, there is a ransom, the feeding of a person in need. Al-Baqarah 185 And said, For the old man or woman who is unable to fast, he or she refrains from fasting and instead feeds a person who is poor with a swa. Swa is a measure equal to four times the quantity held by two ostrich hands of wheat and some scholars they say this is like one and a half kilos of wheat according to Dar Kutni uh, Dar Kutni he mentioned this so nowadays you know some people do not know about sa do not know about mud so they simplify it it's like one and a half kilos of uh, wheat or rice or the staple food of that particular country even though some say okay you know if you cannot give it 
um, as food, you can give uh, money. But this is a bone of contention among the scholars. So the most uh, desirable uh, thing is to give it in the form of food if you can. If you cannot, so you have to calculate, you know, the amount that you need to pay to feed a poor person, you know, in, in, in that country. So in the North America, normally they say this is like nine to ten dollars. One year, uh, Anas ibn Malik became too weak to fast, so he prepared a large dish of tharid. Tharid, the quantity held at the two ostrich hands. Tharid is a kind of food then, and invited 30 people who came and ate their uh, fill. Well, so you can either, you know, uh, every single day, you uh, give food to a poor person or you can gather like 30 people 30 days so you gather 30 people and feed them at once it's all possible thus we can understand that the elderly men and women in poor health are permitted to break their fast as are the uh, chronically ill Instead of fasting, they are obliged to feed one poor person a skin a day for every day of fasting that they do not perform. However, when people, when elderly people reach the point of absent-mindedness, in Arabic they call this kharaf. You know, sometimes some people, when they get very old, they are not uh, conscious of their actions. They behave like uh, children. You know, they, they, they talk aimlessly, so there will be no fast for those people. Those people, they are exempted from fasting, and they are not also obliged or required to feed the needy for the days they missed. Because there is, uh, their case is just like uh, someone who is insane. So we all know that an insane person is not obliged to fast. So if an, an elderly uh, person reaches a state of aimless talk and uh, uh, behaving like uh, a child, so they are not required to um, uh, feed uh, a skin, a poor person, nor are they required to um, uh, make up for the days uh, they have uh, missed. So when an old person is mentally sound but physically weak and observation of the fast would further weaken their body, he or she does not have to fast but should feed a needy person for every day missed. The aim of this religion is not to burden people to a point that they will be incapable physically of carrying out the juries enjoined by Allah. This is evident in Allah's words. So fear Allah as much as you can. So Taghabun verse 16. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah burdens not a person beyond his cup. It is clearly evident that when fasting will result in the opposite of the intended outcome, namely causing danger to the sacredness of life, Islam gives room for the Muslims. Thus, it can be understood that when a Muslim is incapable of fasting due to the reason mentioned above, feeding becomes a substitute. Among those uh, exempted from fasting, uh, the traveler. But the traveler does not uh, pay fidia. Okay? So the traveler makes up the days for not fasting. Any day that a traveler misses, they need to make it up. Alright? So 
it has been pointed out that a traveler has the option during a journey to fast or to compensate for it later on. This is uh, clearly explained in many hadith. It is reported from Aisha radiallahu anha that Hamza ibn Amr al-Asma'i asked, O Messenger of Allah, I am a person who fasts often, so should I fast while, I, while traveling? Uh, the Prophet replied, Fast if you wish and refrain from fasting if you wish. Bukhari and Muslim reported this hadith. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said, I travel with the Messenger of Allah in Ramadan, and a fasting person would not criticize the one not fasting, nor the one not fasting criticize the fasting person. Again, Bukhari and Muslim reported this hadith. However, there is no disagreement among the scholars that if fasting on a journey brings hardship upon a person then it is better and more beloved to Allah that the uh, the person breaks the fast this is based on one hadith narrated by Ibn Jabir with Allah anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw a person in a shade he asked about him the companions replied that he was fasting Allah's Messenger said, It is not righteous that you fast on a journey. Again, Bukhari and Muslim reported this hadith. But if fasting on a journey does not cause hardship for a person, then it is better to fast. One to sumu, khairulakum. People keep asking this question, you know, for example, uh, the distance that uh, could be um, regarded as uh, a travel. Well, uh, this has to be um, uh, at the discretion of the traveler because we know that um, if you uh, if you if you say that it is like every kilometers, just like some scholars uh, have mentioned, okay. All this will contain that, you know, that should not be considered as a, a traveling distance. Well, it is a contentious matter. So you, you, you yourself, you know, you know, what uh, constitutes as traveling. You can uh, rely on this uh, calculation, 80 kilometers. It, it, sometimes, sometimes it could be less. So the, I think the best thing here to do is to see for yourself does this travel it cause hardship for you if it does then refrain from fasting if you see that uh, this traveling does not cause any hardship for you then fast you know that is the easiest way to uh, do it um, um, so those who need to make up their um, uh, fast if they break are the women during period and in the childbirth state fasting for women during the period of menstruation or post childbirth is forbidden is forbidden they are not allowed to fast it's not optional a woman who is in the period of menstruation or uh, post uh, natal status post childbirth state all right does not fast is forbidden for her to fast and should be making up later the days they miss the day for a day this is confirmed by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, who said during her monthly cycle referring to women she neither prays nor
Pass in Bukhari. Such a woman is considered like the sick, so she is permitted to break her fast and must compensate the days she missed afterwards. This is indicated in Allah's words. Ayyaman ma'adudat faman kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin fa'iddatu min ayyamin ukhar observing psalm or fast for a fixed number of days. But if any of you is still on a journey, the same number should be made up from other days. Al-Baqarah Ayah 184. Um, also the pregnant and breastfeeding woman. If a pregnant woman or breastfeeding mother feels that fasting may endanger their life and harm the unborn or newly born, the Sharia gives them permission to break fast. They will have to make it up at any time after Ramadan. However, according to one opinion of scholars, they can break the fast and pay the fidya. They do not have to make up the days missed. The Prophet wasallam said to one of his companions, Come, I shall inform you about the fast Allah, the blessed and most high, remitted half the prayer for the traveler and fasting for the pregnant and breastfeeding. This is in At-Tirmidhi ibn Majah Abu Dawud. Ibn Abbas used to say to his wives who were pregnant, you are in the same situation as those who can fast, but do not. You are to pay the ransom and do not have to make up the days later. So this is uh, uh, somehow contentious uh, as far as the scholars are concerned. But the bottom line here, you know, which is uh, uh, almost uh, 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 a unanimous point if a pro pregnant woman or breastfeeding mother feels that fasting may endanger their life and, they, and, and, and harm the unborn or newly born the sharia gives them permission to break fast they will have to make it up at any time after Ramadan um, a person having a sudden illness when a person has a sudden illness and his um, uh, prognosis indicates a serious condition which when fasting causes harm or affects his, his or her health he or she is granted permission to break the fast till recovery and should compensate for it this is explained in the following verse in which allah has Allow the sick person to refrain from fasting as a mercy for him. Allah said, فَمَنْ شَهِرَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُّمْهُ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّكُ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ يُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ عُسْرَ So whoever, whosoever of you cites the crescent of the first night of the month of Ramadan, he must fast that month, and whoever is, uh, is ill or on a journey, the same number of days which one did not fast must be compensated from other days. Allah intends for you ease, and he does not want to make things difficult for you. Al-Baqarah verse 185, an important note, if a sick person or a traveler fast and withstand the hardship of the fast and continue to fast while feeling the hardship their fast will be valid but disliked for they did not accept the concession allah gave them thereby causing themselves much hardship and the prophet sallallahu said allah loves to give allowance just as he hates that you commit sins and in another narration just as he loves to give his obligations 
he also said it is not righteousness to fast during a journey Bukhari and Muslim now we move on to actions which nullify the fast with uh, atonement atonement qada all right um, things which invalidate fast make make fast invalid uh, of two kinds the first one requires qada only making up mistakes the other one not only requires qada but also kafara a penalty is involved the following are the things that require qada only atonement one deliberate vomiting this is indicated in the sin of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whoever has an attack of vomiting while he is fasting there is no atonement is required of him he doesn't make it up because it is not intentional but whoever vomits intentionally then let him fast another day in its place abu daud at tirmidhi and others so this is very clear if you vomit, vomit intentionally then your fast is invalid and you need to make it up but if it is not intentional you know you overeat for example and all of a sudden you vomit you have no uh, intention of vomiting all right then your fast is valid two bleeding of menstruation or after childbirth the beginning of menstruation or post child uh, bleeding even in the last moment before sunset you know if uh, a woman bleeds just moments before sunset okay before the end of the uh, that first uh, day right it is reported uh, from abu huraira and ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma that the prophet said it is not if she menstruates then uh, she does not pray no fast he said yes indeed he said then that is the deficiency in hadith so uh, again this is an important um, uh, point for sisters that if a woman bleeds right because of her period or post birth menstruation moments before the sunset right the fast is invalid is invalid and they need qada atonement they need to make it up such women should fast for the rest of the day and she must compensate the day let's say in the middle of the day or moments before the sunset a woman bleeds all right so the fast is invalid but they should refrain from eating all right until uh, sunset uh, taking injections or drugs that are used instead of food you know they have food value if any injection with a food value makes the fast invalid so intentional intake of anything that has the same effect as eating or drinking invalidates the fast for example any injection that has nourishment in it and acts like food would break one's fast similarly um, is the use of drips containing glucose these injections are meant to give nourishment to the sick person so that's why they invalidate fast uh, the other thing is letting anything in the mouth intentionally the intake of any kind of food or drink that reaches the stomach invalidates the fast similarly intentional intake of anything to the stomach whether beneficial or harmful such as a stone or a coin 
or a string etc nullifies the first uh, the other thing is ejaculation of sperm indulging intentional um, uh, extraction of, of of semen or sperm by masturbation or caressing or kissing or hugging etc nullifies the fast we mentioned before if uh, um, um, uh, the couple can control their desire so if they kiss and that will not lead to anything else that's fine but if you kiss and uh, um, uh, um, sperm comes out you know or someone masturbates then that will nullify the fast it has also been stated by muslim scholars that such a person needs a sincere repentance to allah and asking for forgiveness and to make up the days missed as well if the fasting person knows that if he starts kissing his wife he may not be able to control himself and it may lead to ejaculation then it becomes unlawful for him to kiss her also breaking of fast under exceptional conditions muslims are permitted to break the fast of ramadan when there is danger to their health or being forced to eat or drink etc the fasting person should not be acting against his free will right but in this situation he or she should make up his or her fast later at any other time of the year uh, an Im important note here as well eating drinking or having intercourse after dawn on the mistaken assumption that it is not done yet would nullify fasting however a person who uh, a person should complete the fast and compensate the day similarly engaging in this act before maghrib on the mistaken assumption that it is all already sunset same same thing that would nullify your fast because uh, you should do your homework and make sure that you know uh, you are not doing it in the wrong time although obviously it is better to hasten in compensating the missed uh, ramadan fast than to delay them it is not obligatory to compensate the mistakes immediately after uh, ramadan it could be it could be delayed whether due to excuse or not due to what is reported from aisha radiallahu anha it used to be uh, that i had days to make up for ramadan and i would not be able to do so except in sha'ban yani before ramadan inshallah my dear brothers and sisters next time we'll talk about actions which nullify the fast with expiation kafar inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our qiyam and siyam and may allah protect the muslim ummah and allah protect us against all sorts of evil inna wali dhalika wal qadir alayhi wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh